Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the anatomy of the sternoclavicular joint, or SC joint. Now, before we get into all this anatomy here and the functions of it, let's first uh, define what the SC joint is. It's an articulation between the manubrium of the sternum and the sternal end of the clavicle. So we can actually see both of the SC joints right here. We'll dive into that in a minute. Recall that the clavicle, if we were to look at the full extent of it, which we will on the next slide, we'll come back to this, the clavicle has two ends. It has a sternal end over here, which is more proximal, or we could say it's more medial, that articulates with the manubrium of the sternum. And then it has a more distal or lateral end, which is the acromial end, which articulates with the acromion of the scapula. And actually this joint right here is actually the acromioclavicular joint, which will be the subject of the next video. Okay? So two ends of the clavicle. We're going to be focusing here on the SC joint, which is the sternal end of the clavicle. But just remember that it has two ends. Okay. Now, here we see an anterior view of the sternum, the manubrium. So this is an anterior view. That makes this over here the patient's left sternoclavicular joint. And over here, this is the patient's right sternoclavicular joint. And before we really get into all this stuff over here, let's actually get some landmarks so we know what we're looking at. Right here is the superior part of the sternum. This is the sternum's manubrium or a manubrium of the sternum. Down here is the, just a part of the sternal body or the body of the sternum, which is inferior to the manubrium. Notice here there's a joint that connects the manubrium to the, to the body of the sternum, and that's called the sternal angle. It has a couple other names you might see. It's also called the angle of Louis, and then it's also called uh, the manubrio-sternal joint. Okay? Now, on the manubrium, we have a few other th pieces here. Up here at the top, we see this concavity right here. This is called the jugular notch. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. We have a ligament that actually runs over the jugular notch. Over here, we have a concavity that's on the right and the left side. This is actually called the clavicular notch. And based on its name, this actually tells you that this is the notch where the clavicle articulates. There's also an attachment site right here for the first rib. Notice the first rib articulates completely with the manubrium. And then down here, we have an articulation for the second rib, or an attachment site for the second rib. You should notice that the second rib actually articulates half with the inferior part of the manubrium, and then half with the superior part of the sternal body. So actually, the articulation for the second rib spans both parts of the sternum here. Okay. So here's the first rib. You can see that the articulation uh, with the manubrium is via costal cartilage. That's going to be characteristic of ribs one through seven. So here's the first costal cartilage. Here's the costal cartilage of the rib one on the patient's left side, and here's the left rib one. Now, of course, here's the two clavicles, one on the patient's right. Here's the clavicle on the patient's left. And you can see here the sternoclavicular joint. Now, what they've done here on the patient's uh, right side, so this is the left side of the image, is they've done a frontal section. So you can see inside the joint capsule. And what's notable about the sternoclavicular joint is actually that inside the joint capsule there is a layer of fibrocartilage. Let me actually zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. So this is actually fibrocartilage right here. This is called the articular disc of the sternoclavicular joint. And this is very important because anatomically speaking, the sternoclavicular joint is a saddle-type joint. Saddle-type joints really only permit movement in two planes. Okay? However, the sternoclavicular joint allows movement in all three. And that's because the articular disc actually transforms an anatomical saddle joint into a functional ball and socket. So it's going to function similar to the shoulder joint or the hip joint, a ball and socket. Anatomically, it's not a ball and socket, but functionally, because of this articular disc, it is. What this articular disc also does is it creates two separate joint cavities or synovial cavities for the SC joint because it is a synovial joint. We have here the cavity that's closest to the sternal end of the clavicle, and then we have another cavity that's closest to the clavicular notch of the manubrium. Okay, so two joint cavities created by that articular disc. But the main thing that's important about the disc is 
is transforming it into a ball and socket joint, which can allow movement in three planes. And we'll see that on the next slide, how that's important. Now over here on the patient's left or the right side of the image, we can actually see the joint capsule. The frontal section has not been taken here. So this is the joint capsule between the clavicle and the manubrium of the sternum, so the SC joint capsule. And what we see here is that there's thickenings of the joint capsule both anteriorly and then if we were to look on the other side, posteriorly. These thickenings are called the anterior and posterior sternoclavicular ligaments. We can of course see the anterior sternoclavicular ligament here. Flipping this around, we'd see the posterior sternoclavicular ligament. There's another ligament over here, which you can see connects the costal cartilage of rib one to the clavicle. And this is called the costoclavicular ligament. Okay. These three ligaments collectively, the anterior and posterior sternoclavicular ligaments and the costoclavicular ligament, they collectively stabilize the SC joints. They're the three main ligaments stabilizing the sternoclavicular joint. Now, there's another ligament here that doesn't directly stabilize the SC joints, but it does, uh, it does attach to them, that is via the joint capsule. It really just plays a role in connecting the two clavicles to one another, and that's called the interclavicular ligament. If we follow the interclavicular ligament from the patient's left side, we can see that it originates here on the superior aspect of the clavicle. It runs over the joint capsule and then traverses over the jugular notch of the manubrium, and then it goes up the patient's right joint capsule and then hits the right clavicle. This is the interclavicular ligament. And when we do a review of this in a future video, we'll actually see another picture where we'll see another view of all these ligaments. In terms of the blood supply and nerve supply to the sternoclavicular joint, the blood supply is via the internal thoracic artery and the suprascapular artery on either side. And the nerve supply is via branches of the suprascapular nerve and the nervous subclavius. Remember that between the clavicle and the first rib, there's a muscle here called the subclavius, which plays a role in depressing the clavicle. So there's a nerve to that called nerve to subclavius, and there's a few branches that come off of that that will actually serve the ipsilateral sternoclavicular joint. Okay, So hopefully this makes sense to you. Now let's go look at the functionality of the sternoclavicular joint. Now, anatomically speaking, if we neglect that articular disc, the type of joint, anatomically speaking, is a saddle joint. Saddle joints really should only permit movement in two planes. However, because of the presence of that disc, we have a functional ball and socket. And you can see here that there's movements in all three planes. And that's very important for the movement of the clavicle. Now, what's important here is that, more or less, the SC joint is fixed. Okay? The movements occur about the axis, or axes, at the sternoclavicular joint, and that's because the manubrium doesn't move. Okay? Um, you can move your shoulder all you want, put your finger or hand on your manubrium, the manubrium doesn't move. So the SC joint is fixed. Whereas if we look at the acromial end of the clavicle, here we see it articulates with the scapula, and this joint right here is actually the acromioclavicular joint, which is the subject of the next video. Now, what's important to know is that every single movement of the scapula right here is associated with a movement of the SC joint. Okay? So to understand this, let's imagine scapular elevation. This is the easiest one to understand. This is basically where you shrug your shoulders up. Well, when you shrug your shoulders up, the scapula elevates and moves up. Right? Now, because the acromial end of the clavicle articulates and is connected with the scapula, if the scapula moves up, then the acromial end of the clavicle also moves up and that movement occurs about a fixed axis at the SC joint right here. You can actually see the hinge right here that's supposed to show you uh, where that movement occurs about whenever you're moving the acromial end of the clavicle up during scapular elevation. And the reverse is also true. If you depress the scapula, bring it back down, well, the acromial end of the clavicle is still connected to it, so the acromial end also depresses and you get a similar movement in the opposite direction about a fixed SC joint. Okay? You can also do protraction and retraction of the SC joint. So again, if you protract the scapula, that would be like if you're reaching forward to grab something far away from you on a table or you're doing a bench press, your uh, scapula is going to protract, so it's going to move forward. And so you can imagine it moving away from the screen toward you. That's protraction of the scapula. Well, if you protract the scapula in that direction, the acromial end of the clavicle is also going to move in that direction. This arrow right here, it's going to move toward you out of the screen. 
and it's going to occur about a movement, again, at a fixed SC joint. In fact, that movement is actually at this axis right here, a vertical axis. You can also retract the uh, sternoclavicular joint if you retract the scapula. So retracting the scapula would be like if you're doing rows in the gym. So basically bring your elbows and put them as posterior as you can behind your trunk. And if you do that, you retract the scapula, it moves into the screen away from you. So therefore the acromial end of the clavicle also moves away from you into the screen. And again, that occurs about a fixed SC joint really at this axis right here. Okay. Also notice you can do posterior and anterior rotation of the sternoclavicular joint. So this is the rotational movement. Um, they haven't shown anterior rotation, but you can rotate it okay, about an axis that goes through the clavicle like this. And then you can rotate it back to its original position for anterior rotation. And you can see there all three planes are accounted for, which basically means that this has to be a functional ball and socket joint. Very important for the function of the SC joint and also very important for movements of the scapula. What we've seen here is that any movement of the scapula produces a corresponding movement of the SC joint. Uh, so for example, if you're doing shoulder abduction, so basically in the gym, you're using your deltoids doing shoulder raises, okay? That's producing shoulder abduction, okay? When you do shoulder abduction, your scapula moves. In fact, your scapula will actually elevate and undergo upward rotation. So because there's a movement of the scapula, you'd also have a movement of the SC joint. Okay? If you're doing a bench press or dumbbell flies, you would actually be protracting the scapula during the upward phase. So if you're protracting the scapula, that's a movement of the scapula. It would also produce a movement of the SC joint. So the key is you can't have a movement of the scapula without a corresponding movement of the SC joint. So they work in tandem completely. Okay? So hopefully this gave you a good understanding of the sternoclavicular joint. In the following video, we're going to start talking about the acromioclavicular joint. So now we're shifting toward the distal end of the clavicle, and we'll introduce even some more complexity here. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.